Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How are you doing? It's your girl, Karen Kege Garabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party. Is that just not the story of our lives? Okay, so let me just put some caveats out there. Kindly look out for my captions. They're not always accurate. They sometimes use a small g for God. They're sometimes misspelled. Sometimes it's the wrong word altogether. Not very reverential. That's not me. Not quite my pick. It's not what I would have done. Uh, but I don't have an incentive to edit my long form content short uh, my my captions precisely because nobody is presently watching so for those reasons i just leave them like that but if it was up to me i would do very differently uh if, if life was better but it's not okay and then next up kindly uh look out for my makeup i'm very potentially wearing application makeup if i am you'll know if i'm not you'll also know um it tends to bounce off and on my face it falls off and on uh yeah i'm not shape shifting and then thirdly um i have a segment an empathy segment that i just gotta get out of the way uh it's an empathy segment because it's aimed at inspiring empathy in those who consume my content it's a very small audience and besides a largely age joe i'm not being looked at by the right eyes okay just some pretty nefarious activities going on out here but i do this anyway because it's my segment and i'm sticking to it okay i'm trying to basically bring forth a blush to display that when you prick me i bleed when you afflict me i get afflicted um when you hurt me i get hurt i've got blood in my body that's what i'm trying to get at anyway whatever i think it worked today some days it doesn't anywho let's just get straight to the point um yeah okay so it is the 20th of june 2024 but it's actually the 19th because i've skipped over into the next day uh because it's the wee hours of the morning but anyway whatever y'all know that that's a thing okay look i'm not gonna be long guys uh because i i had to do emergency shorts again i always get into emergency short mode whenever i get a tag not always these days that's just my reaction instead of flight i fight um my adrenaline responds to demonic abuse demonic attack um as a result of like witchcraft activity um in the streets i yeah anyway look this is not gonna be long all right because of those shorts that i did and because i just don't want to be long because i've already spoken about this before like you know having to reiterate matters when i've already spoken about it it's like I, I don't even know what's going on here. I, I just, I don't. But let the Lord officially and finally just do what he will with the circumstance. But I am, quite frankly, just exhausted. But I've, I've been exhausted for a minute, but I'm, I'm super exhausted now. Um, okay, so when I was busy working out today, attacked again, struggled to work out, but I pushed because that's just what we do. I saw, you, you guys remember my potato shorts? The shorts that I did with a, an underground buried potato. Yeah, uh, if you have been with me for any amount of time, uh, I did shorts where I was a potato, okay? Um, they're not, they, they weren't done that very long ago, so if you just scroll down my shorts, you might find them. I do have many shorts, so even though they were not that long ago, they are down there somewhere because of how many shorts I have, but they are recent in terms of the date. Uh, they were done in this very month of June. Yeah, in those potato shorts, I was basically lamenting about how I'm like a potato and I've been buried in the ground and God is going to come at you with a flying kick, something of that nature. I had a, a, a vision while I was working out of my potato, my version, my potato, like the me version, the me, the version of me that is a potato, that was a potato in the ground. I had a dream of that potato being old and worn out like you know when a potato gets old you guys like it gets sort of kind of wrinkly yeah i had a vision of of my potato not only being in a potato box like a box where you would not a, uh, like a box like a, a wooden crate of potatoes you know where sometimes when you buy potatoes ugh, at least historically i haven't seen a crate of potatoes in a minute uh, but back in the day when I was growing up, we sometimes used to buy potatoes in crates, in wooden crates. Um, yeah, anyway, whatever. So I, I had a, a vision of me being a potato in a wooden crate, an old school wooden crate. And in and of myself, I was an old potato, like a worn out potato, you know, wrinkly, like juice sapped out of it. Like it's been around for a minute. So it even shrinks in size and starts to have wrink like crinkled skin like you know yeah you know an old potato and it's soft it's no longer hard to the touch but it, it's like cushiony yeah i was like that 
I was like that or the potato version of me was like that and I was like god how long are you gonna let these witches continue to experiment and from what I understood it was it came from a woman it, it's, a, it's a female that did this guys you know like there's just a lot of evil and it's funny it's ironic because the video that I uploaded the the most recent long form content that I uploaded was where it is that I was speaking about the destruction of men by rotten women and how it is that these destructive men don't destroy in isolation but they're aided along and abetted along by women well it, it, I guess it was a, an opportune or a timely video to upload at the time that I uploaded given that I don't upload in real time because of just the uh, affliction of my person by women like Eva guys you know what like I just yes in guys dirty rats vibes die I, I thoroughly feel that way like Piper Piper Pied Piper of Hamilton I feel like I'm actually playing a flute to some rodents trying to lead them out of a town that they might ultimately enter a watery grave goodbye ain't nobody gonna miss you anyway whatever these embittered women or these lackluster females the ones that i'm dealing with are ones that like in the video that i did where i was speaking about how women can be horrible in in essentially contributing to the destruction the destructive demeanor of men mm. i was speaking about how it is that it can sometimes be their moms their sisters etc women who are allegedly well-meaning all in the interest of improving the life of their children their sons their brothers they then throw like good girls to bad men uh type establishment thing that was the, the the general lament that i was fashioning this is not happening one second anyway whatever i'm doing it is in the background and i'm distracted but let's just move on yeah i was i was lamenting there's a video that i did very recently where i was saying that if people are triggered by my ministry they do best to just walk out and encounter other people if people are triggered by my ministry they must leave I, I made it I made mention of the fact that I, I, I am deliberately targeting Gen Z's because I am aware of the frightful mistakes that millennials have made and Gen X's basically the older generations I am aware of how frightfully ominous their lives now are as a result of their disregard of Jesus Christ and their fluffy lukewarm disposition them ignoring God altogether I yeah and so for those reasons I, I even put a caveat in my ministry saying if you are a millennial and you are triggered by me because of the mistakes you've made with your life go find somebody else that will be comforting to you because I use the mistakes that people in my age group and beyond have made in order to basically stay Gen Z's from going out like that I am targeting them in the worst way to not end up like my former friends like my former colleagues like you get my point people that essentially have made so many heinous mistakes with their lives that they struggle to listen to a person who has held fast to Jesus held on to Christ and has not made the mistakes that they all made and are now bearing the ramifications the consequences because the reaction to their embitterment in the climate of a person that is warning an, a future generation to not end up like them their reaction might sometimes be sin it might be basically making like Cain killing Abel. Do you understand know what I'm saying? Women and men, but I'm speaking to women at this point. Women who will go out of their way to massacre, neutralize, annihilate, essentially extinct a fellow female because she is doing that which Jesus would have her do. I told them if you're triggered by my ministry, get out, find some other people that will be encouraging to you. There are so many people on YouTube that do videos that do not speak in retrospect that do not do like these kinds of videos that tell stories get into an, an in-depth analysis of consequences as a result of what they've experienced there are people who just give the gospel very flatly very ubiquitously generally and they don't go out of their way to essentially tell stories or tales of where they come from my ministry is very testimony focused and my it is my testimony and pretty much my experiences at the hands of those who afflicted me because i gave my life to christ and i am still gaining for myself people who are my age group that have literally committed abominable heinous mistakes and instead of repenting and basically realizing that they've made their bed now they must lie in it they they can't have their cake and eat it too okay they chose to mistrust christ experiment with witchcraft uh marry the deadbeat dude because who in the climate of that deadbeat marriage of which 
in the run-up too, they were glaring warning signs, like just glaring, glaring. I did a video speaking about how it is that we were all awarded the same opportunities, the same chances at Christ, and I took it while quite the chunk majority of my former friends just didn't. Not even majorities, pretty much all of them. And so people come to my space and they can relate, but not from the vantage point of being me, but from the vantage point of being those who made these errors. And their reaction is literally exactly just like that of my former friends, former colleagues, family members, etc. Bewitch the living daylights out of me. They make a decision to go and afflict a complete stranger with sorcery. Like I have endured that level of harassment of my person from strange, ominous, eerie, creepy, weird, unnecessary, and entirely irresponsible millennials that come into my ministry and initially like me. Not just millennials, but Gen Xs. Initially, they like me, but I'm just such a tough pill to swallow. I am such a tough pill to swallow with all those testimonies that I, I give. Like women who are married, for instance, to these heinous men that hold hostage women. All different kinds of charms in a relationship. Like the dude is out here literally ha binding hand and foot. His wife with sorcery and she can't move left or right. And she comes to learn later once they are now married that this is what happened to her but in the run-up to the signs and the like proper they were there they were there so initially they relate with me on some yeah my husband is a deadbeat goodness gracious he's busy like hard knock with me and i don't know whether i am coming or going initially they are like that do you understand what i'm saying and then after being like that as time progresses and they listen to my witness Yes, like it, man. There's, there's these fangs that grow, these these um ugly heads that come out, this envy that, that, that is emanated and it produces retaliatory sorcery along the lines of, I'm not going to be the only one suffering like this. They literally, it's like misery loves company. So I have sent caveats out there before on some, if you're triggered by my ministry to save yourself from sin, to save yourself from the cane like uh, general demeanor, get out, leave. I, I won't be afflicted. I won't feel sad, bad. I won't be, you know, upset about the loss of subscriber. I will not. Because at the end of the day, the kingdom of heaven rejoices when even one sinner repents. If at all, it'll cause this person repentance to walk away from my ministry. The loss of that subscriber is frankly a win for heaven because they have gouged out their eye and they've cut off their hand. I spoke about how it is that if anything causes you to sin, that's what's written in God's word. One second. The Bible says gouge it out and cut it off if it causes you to sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I gave counsel in that regard to these women that are triggered by me I, I made it clear that i'm not the only christian in these streets i'm not the only ministry that can be edifying in these streets i am not the only person frankly that can that can enable um a cause along of a woman to you know do right by herself concerning jesus there are so many christian ministries i even made recommendations of women that won't necessarily trigger them i spoke about melissa doherty i spoke about uh, I, 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 in that video um J Jackie Hill Perry, I spoke, uh, even though Jackie, from what the Lord showed me, is compromised in a certain respect. However, her ministry is, is there's, like, there's nothing that can that you can suspect out of that. So I sent them to Jackie's ministry, and I also told them that they can watch Ali Beth Stucky. Like, there are so many women that they can watch that won't trigger them. But my, my testimony is very focused on, my, 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 my witness is very focused on my stories, my experiences, my regrets. That which Christ rescued me from, and uh, and because of the fact that I've been holding fast to Jesus ever since I was just 26. Hey, Baton, guys, like, whoa. Uh, people that are my age, slightly older, slightly younger, yes, like it, but that have made mistakes, they just, they struggle to stomach me. And I, like I said, if you are triggered, get out of my ministry. There is a reason why you are watching a Christian ministry. It's because you are interested in the things of God. You would not just linger on me. But something triggers you. And unfortunately for me, <laughs> people are purging where I'm concerned. They're purging. They're purging because of what appears to be crime being legal around my particular life for 24 hours a day. Like that movie, The Purge. They're purging. The, what makes them purge is my poverty. What makes them purge is my familylessness. Like the fact that I don't have support. Not a real, true, loving, supportive family. What makes them purge is my unemployment. What makes them purge... Yeah, they, they are basically bullies. They're bullies utilizing my socioeconomic situation as something to try and very quickly finish me off. But unfortunately for them, they're going to find themselves finished off by God because there is a job 
that God is doing through me. And on top of that, there was a job that God has set apart for me. On top of that, the reason why I was even put in this position by God in the first place was to save me or to protect me from the very men that they essentially got swept by a tsunami concerning. The loss of clout of my person, the loss of basically respect by society made very shallow, dastardly men who were interested in me at some point pass me up. And it was that passing of me up that rescued me. But it must also be comprehended that that happened because God, because I prayed, because I asked to be shielded from even myself in just settling with anybody. Because I know how love can make a person essentially disregard glaring red flags. So God has on numerous occasions and the most recent one was just two years ago. He has rescued me from myself, from my own decisions because I sought his face to do that for me. I did not insist once he snatched me out of a nasty situation to run with it anyway. So it is all of these. So basically that which is the use usage of my sorrow to continue to afflict me is self defeating and counterproductive precisely because God is using my sorrow to ward off satanic men like it was used my 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 so my my poverty my lack my want was my shield it was the impregnable fortress around me it was the thing that helped me but now it is being weaponized again against me at the peril of these people if the lord saw it fit to impoverish me so as to spare me from ending up with some random dude and on top of that if at all he wanted to use that witness to salvage the youth what makes you think that you who are standing in the way of that job, seeing as you were so stubborn, so recalcitrant that God gave your baton over to the Gen Z's, what makes you think that he's not going to literally slap you out the way, just wham you out the way? These people are essentially risking their souls, they're risking their lives. If my ministry triggers you because you're 36, 37, 38, 40, 45, if my ministry triggers you because you are that age and have amassed for yourself all the regret that comes in those years, because of decisions that you made back then leave i am only encouraging to women my age if we're in the same boat if we have all been waiting on christ and it's been a minute we are 39 and unmarried single waiting on the lord for husbands and it's sad because there's like a looming cloud over us of but like how long must i wait but you have not settled you've not compromised you haven't fornicated you haven't allowed yourself to just marry anything that comes I'm encouraging to women like those. I'm inspirational to them because we're in the same boat. We're in it together. We are 40 and single together. But the ones that are now hanging out in these streets with either STDs or baby mamas of like dudes they can't stand and all the yes, like it guys. Yeah, like you know, get out of my ministry, y'all. I mean, goshi, I am not kicking you out because it's just what I'm doing and I'm trying to be mean or I am, am, am what is this I'm insensitive and empathetic towards your cause that's not what I'm doing I'm telling you to get out for the sake of your souls because of how you are reacting you are not mature in your reception of my fortitude you are trying to throw me under the bus because you were thrown under it you are making it like Cain so it is loving for me to tell you to get the step in find somebody else to listen to due to the fact that it can actually save your soul the Bible says if anything causes you to sin, gouge it out. If anything causes you to sin, cut it off your hand. If your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Your hand, you would agree, is something you need. So too is your eye, if you would agree, is something you need. It is. It, it appears an unserving of oneself to cut off something you need, something you like, something you feel as if though you, you can't live another day without it. The absence of it is uncomfortable but if it makes you sin you gotta get rid of it some of y'all subscribed to me because you like me because i was so reaching because you could relate to my stories because i dodged bullets that you couldn't and the details of my stories of my stories stories are so similar to yours that you latch onto me there is a, a very strong familiarity of my story and my circumstance to your own however without the same end result because of your reaction to your former situation versus mine Mine was charted in a course so as to spare me from the devastation of ramifications, whereas yours led you in the direction of ramifications. Same story, different outcomes. So because you are so able to relate with me, I am like a limb to you or an eye, but I am making you sin. And so you gotta gouge me out. You have got to cut me off. You have to. And in the beginning, after you have lost an, an arm in an amputation, 
there is something called phantom feelings or like you know you, you feel as if though your arm is still there you you can feel it you 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 feel as though you're even gesturing with it it is a phantom arm it, it is not really there but you feel like it's there and then when you wake up to discover that it's not there there is a sense of loss a grief a bereavement you gotta go through it that's what i'm getting at just as with any breakup when you spend all your time with somebody and then next thing you're not together anymore it's going to hurt and in the beginning it, there's going to be a void that you may very potentially desire to fill with unhealthy habits like getting back together with a person you knew you had to break up with or like fornicating finding a cuddy buddy in these streets somebody with whom to you know cuddle because the person the significant other is gone they're not there anymore there are unhealthy ways to deal with severance of a close relationship and then there are healthy ways however time heals all wounds time will make you literally forget me because at the end of the day who am i at the end of the day who am i just some random chick you found the channel off on youtube i'm literally nobody so therefore nobody me I nobody me do that to me make me nobody again granted that you don't know me from a bar soap and here it is that you are literally investing in sorcery on a stranger a person you just met on the internet and her stories are so relatable and it's so painful that now you have gone on right here and made like Cain and you're killing Abel. You're killing a strange woman you do not know. You're investing your blood, sweat and tears in a woman you don't know. You consume my content like it's alcohol. You can't help but click on my videos because it's like an addiction to a relationship. You feel like you need a person. You want to hear what they have to say. The topic, the title is intriguing it's interesting you want to hear what, she, what 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 her angle is on this particular issue you are curious it killed a cat okay your your itchy finger your your shaky finger that makes you click on my videos you need to brittle it cut it unsubscribe and then go to that those three those three little dots on the side of a youtube video click on them and then say don't recommend channel again do that to spare yourselves even from the recommendations of my videos unsubscribe and then do not recommend channel unsubscribe and then do not recommend channel so i don't ever pop up in your feed ever again if you've watched 10 of my shorts it's inevitable that you're going to have my shorts recommended to you again if you have watched three of my long form videos it is inevitable that they're going to keep on getting recommended to you so not only should you unsubscribe but you should also click on those three red but those three dots on the side and say do not recommend channel then in that way they are not going to recommend my shorts and they're also not going to recommend my long form content and that's how you start to heal okay that's how you still start to heal that's how you start to move on that's how this amputation this phantom hand of yours will all of a sudden start to not feel like a phantom hand anymore you will realize that you have been amputated and now you're just dealing with the amputation and that'll save your soul because then you're not going to jealously keep on going back to witchcraft keep on going back to the drawing board the rubbish that i have been seeing at the hands of strange suspicious little random women i'm like as in bafazindini at this point i don't care about you anymore like i just don't care whether you live whether you die at this point i do not care because the comatose activity that you are partaking in this flatlining thing that you are doing i am already suffering i'm already going through a lot my life is already hard and for a a a a a a a my life is already hard I don't need any more of this stuff but at the end of the day whether or not i mean people have no respect for the fact that i don't need any more rubbish in my life but what they can respect seeing as you're so narcissistic is your own soul you can at least respect that it's literally headed to the abyss you can at least respect that much the the self um self uh adoration the the the, the self exaltation that you are in the aggrandizing of your person let that snatch you out from the flames let your own self love snatch you from the flame seeing as it is not concerned for my well-being and my emotions my feelings and how i am going to be devastated by what you're trying to do to me yeah seeing as i am not the inspiration here given that you are as selfish as you are continue in that selfishness and save yourself selfishly from the flames of hell by getting out of my ministry seeing as you can't consume my content with maturity jen millennials and gen x's and like i said i'm not kicking you out if you are innocent if you are innocuous in this matter i am literally de deliberately targeting gen z's and alpha which is unlikely ain't no 13 year old listening to me right now but you get my point i'm targeting the youth to help them avoid the mistakes i've made the mistakes my former friends have made what a what a fish face all that jazz i am targeting them yesterday i did a whole video speaking about how it is that if you can avoid recreational dating at all fornication all that jazz do it please 
those are mistakes that I made. I wish I had not done it because then I wouldn't have collected myself all these rubbish boyfriends. I wouldn't have done that. That's my ministry. That's my angle. But even in spite of targeting Gen Zs, I am nonetheless being viewed, of course, by people my age group. I will li likely, largely, more than likely attract them. Not all of them are dishonest or unbecoming or ridiculous. So I'm not kicking them out, but I am making it clear that I'm trying to target the kids. But everybody else that is triggered by me, gouge me out, cut me off. Because herein lies the deal. The wickedness that you are walking in, women. Little, she has in, I need to do something. The wickedness that you are walking in is going to devastate, not so much me, but you. But in the run up to it devastating you, it's going to hurt me. It is tormenting to understand just the support of rape that women are actively participating in. It is withering of my view of the female species. It is literally destroying how I see women. And it ought not do that. Like, just to gauge that there are women who are the, t the equivalent or tantamount. That's actually what my little emergency shorts were about. Women who would be the, 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 the tantamount of those who are helping men pin down uh, women that they are raping. You are the one that has bound her head and foot. You are the one that's making sure that she remains kidnapped in some shit somewhere in the wilderness. You are essentially throwing women to sharks because I can't be the only one. Except the thing is here, right? These sharks that might have devoured you, you were willing at the time of their devouring of your person, you essentially swam in sharky waters knowing that they were there. And you imagine that you could pet a shark because it was a baby shark. You imagine that you could play around with a shark. So you threw yourself in sharky waters. You put yourself in a position to be experimented with by a man. Promised things that can't possibly be fulfilled because he was obviously ungodly. And you were toggling with the things of God. You were, ex you were investigating the things of God. You were keen on the things of God. And you could tell that a man that you were busy fraternizing with was insincere about Jesus for crying out loud, guys. You could tell that he was insincere. From his belly was not flowing rivers of living water. His fruit left a lot to be desired. His life, his rap sheet was so substandard to yours. And yet in the spirit or in the quest of adoration, seeking it out, thirst for love. I don't blame you. You are Eve from, of course, now your judgment from now on is to desire your husband. So desiring love from men it's, it's a female thing. We get it. But goodness, if you don't exercise self-control concerning who you allow yourself to receive that desired love from, on that day, then you're to blame. Do you understand? You are to blame. There is nothing wrong with desiring love from men. What is imperative, however, is to ascertain that you only allow yourself to receive it from a certain man that the Lord will set apart from for you. And also certain men, if at all they're within your brotherhood circle. If at all they're within your family, familial circle. But you need to know when to sever ties with certain kinds of men. There are men that will uh, just massacre you. But they're good at talking. We all know they can be smooth like that. They sometimes look really good. And so just because you are made to feel good for all of five seconds, you then throw away all of the apprehension you might have concerning his lack of fruit, the gut feeling. That's what you call it, right? Yeah. All the things, all the glaring signs that are gawking at you in the climate of this very handsome man. That is as charming, well-spoken, eloquent, able to just shower you with compliments. Yeah, in the climate of all of that, you should have exercised discretion as many other women do. To not take it too seriously, precisely because this here you can tell is an insincere, flirtatious, tongue is like dripping honey type man. You, you knew that. You were smart enough, you were wise, intelligent enough to be able to gauge these statistics as exactly what they are. Yet you ran with it. So you dunk to yourself in sharky waters. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you decided, you imagined that it was feasible for you to pet a shark. And then it devoured you. Then when Garabo is super careful, guarded and trepidatious, consternatious concerning the ocean at all, never mind a sharky portion of it, you then go out of your way to inebriate me with some toxin in my body that I might fall asleep. And then you put me on a rubber dinghy into the ocean and leave me there hoping that one of these sharks are going to devour me. And then when the Lord puts a whole sphere of protection around me to ascertain that I don't get consumed by piranha or shark in this ocean that you have put me in the center of in a dinghy that is made of rubber, you then 
bewitch the living Thielata out of my force field. You then attempt to literally penetrate an impregnable fortress. Seeing as my fortress is impregnable, in the center of the ocean that you've abandoned me to be consumed by sharks at, you therefore ought recognize who here is in danger when they try to break an impregnable fortress. It is the one that is trying to breach that protection. You who are trying to overwhelm my shielding. You who are trying to cause me to abandon my fever for Jesus. You are the one that is in danger. If the Lord has seen it fit to put an orb of protection around me, put me in some impregnable glass at sea where you have left me marooned, destituted, constantly shooting at that shield is your demise. Constantly pecking away at that fortress is the demise of that experimental beast. You are in harm's way by trying to get at me. And that's why I am counseling you. You've abandoned me at sea. You've done that. You've made that error. Leave me alone then walk away. Okay. While I try to navigate my way to land again, seeing as I've been left destitute at sea by women, leave me alone because it's what you will do anyway. It's what you insist on doing. Leave me alone and repent to the Lord. Go to him and ask him for forgiveness and hope for the best where I'm concerned. Slap me with all the best, Garabo. I hope this works out for you. But get out and then start to actively make amends with God. And don't ever look back at the woman that is a severe trigger because the Lord is not going to insist that you hang around in a, in a situation, a circumstance, an ecosystem that stumbles you that much. If you are a little bit of an Ananias and a Safira where I am concerned, where you could have been supportive, but you chose not to. God is not going to insist that you continue to fellowship in an environment where every single person in that particular little community triggers you. They stumble you. Go where it is that you can deal, where you can handle. How else can I explain this? It is ideal for a woman to be mature as she gets older, right? When she is in the climate of young women whose glory is just excruciating to her. When she is starting to sag, when everything is falling apart pendulously, when gravity is having a field day with her, it is ideal, it is glorious and biblical and ideal for her to love these women with absolutely no covetousness in her heart, with her having no desire to ruin something of them, with her not having ill intention towards these females. It's ideal for her to just love them and to be an older sister or a mom figure to these young women. It's ideal. It's ideal for this woman to take them under her wing, like mother hen, and essentially, uh, what do you was like counsel them, uh, mentor them in womanhood. It's ideal that she should do this. But if this woman suffers vehemently from an excruciating jealousy against younger women because she has been, for instance, abused by an ex-husband that used to always just pick away at her glory, always telling her that she's not beautiful anymore, that she's getting old or during pregnancy, mocking her stretch marks, calling her a zebra, saying that her cellulite is canyonic like the Grand Canyon and he it is unsightly. And every time they were at the mall together, he couldn't help but be like, see, if only you, would, you look like that woman, if only you dressed like that woman, if only you had that glory. And then over and above it cheats on her until ultimately following a spate of uh, what is this uh infidelities cheating on her she then files for divorce and ends up single again right when you've got that kind of pain when you have that sort of trauma when a person made you so insecure and squandered the best of your years when you were still very beautiful and yet this person was out just speaking to you and about you like you're nothing that can build in your body like i said a post-traumatic stress that will make it very hard for you then to gaze upon the glory of young women growing up in your presence because somebody with derision was always just tearing you down, right? Tearing you down, absolutely massacring your self-confidence. It took years of destruction. It is not going to take two days to recover. Rome was not built in a single day. Do you understand what I'm saying? So therefore, in your journey of healing, you are better off in the company of women your age that also have got issues with gravity, women who also need a whole bunch of tretinoin and retinol, women who also have a whole bunch of grays, stretch marks on their stomach for, from multiple pregnancies, women with chubby knees and chubby ankles because they're getting older. 
you're better off in the climate of women whose whose outward appearance does not trigger you in a way that your husband was mocking so as an asper an aspirational gospel servant you then ought recognize where it is that your ministry will probably best be fitted and for you to best also walk in a godliness a godliness so do not then constantly immerse yourself in high teas with up-and-coming young women who are about to get married being doted over by men who are treating them much better than the way that your man treated you also granted that you're older you're not being looked at by men anymore the way that you used to get looked at and so this is just going to eat alive at you like a maggot so while it is ideal for you to be a nice little mama hen to younger women when you've got that kind of trauma you are better off avoiding them hi bye little sandra and move on but don't hang with them don't insist on counseling them don't don't sit around listening to their stories their testimonies they're gonna eat you whole the lord gets that the lord knows that we are made of dust and so he has compassion on us if you do not brittle that if you don't exercise that self-control and if you, also you don't recognize your own weaknesses you are going to end up like michelle david's wife who when the king was out here dancing she was mocking him teasing him trying to basically rain on his parade that is a person who is walking in a jealousy against someone that is walking in a glory and it causes them to be offensive insulting you know full of backbiting it, it, it's entirely unnecessary you need to know what ecosystems to immerse yourselves in the lord expects you to be kind to everybody to young women and older women but he knows what your limitations are and so therefore when you avoid them you are not being ungodly you are being self-preserving if anything causes you to sin gouge it out cut it off if you struggle with young women don't insist on having a ministry as a middle-aged woman that is going to be counseling younger women if that is something that triggers you don't insist on it having used that example then i am now going to use the same sort of kind of analogy where i'm concerned y'all are struggling with me for reasons that you were likely traumatized by the very thing that i have evaded the very thing i've escaped these hunger games i've been in and constantly winning you at some point fell prey to them and so that trauma makes you look at me like this annoying bright eyed and bushy tailed irritant that is frankly constantly just poking and prodding away at your open glaring wounds that is not my intention in the same way that a beautiful young woman in the climate of a middle-aged woman whose ex-husband is gangster or was gangster against her this woman is not going out of her way to deliberately hurt the older woman by just being so dainty but it hurts her she's not malicious in her youngness and all that flair of innocence she's not truly actually going out of her way to hurt this woman but it's doing that to her so this woman does best to just walk out the room quietly and saves her soul in so doing she spares herself from walking in a wickedness against a woman in in being hey guys yes in y'all women we like this have a discussion I, i'm not trying to be long here but it appears that i might have a, a discussion for a little longer than i would have frankly appreciated but anyway we're having it okay you have no idea in this season of my sorrow of my suffering how many older women have and by older women i mean like mommy age like women that were old enough to be my moms guys that you know, purely because of my persecution my suffering my sorrow how it is that i was so mistreated by family how i got yelled at it just breaks my heart to think about it you know what what it, it actually um reminds me of this there's, there's there's actually a celebrity version an example of this that i can use to help you understand just how inappropriate a situation was you guys will remember when justin bieber got interviewed by ellen degeneres <laughs> like i i wanted to cry when 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 i was listening to that when i saw that interview okay ellen degeneres essentially made a decision that she was going to be justin bieber's mom for the day all right uh, one second Ellen DeGeneres made a decision that she's going to make herself mom and legal guardian over Justin Bieber. She essentially left her designated position. She abandoned her jurisdiction and entered into another person's domicile altogether. It was unacceptable what she did that day. Ellen DeGeneres is a celebrity uh, talk show host or was. I don't know what she's doing today. Similarly to was Justin Bieber a uh, celebrity invited to such a show as this uh, to get invited to a talk show to speak about your exploits as a, a songstress a musician 
a comedian whatever you don't expect that people are going to be rebuking you rebuking you sorry like you're a bad little boy and you need to be spanked and whatnot like just basically calling you out almost as if though you came home super late after skipping curfew and your grandmother was waiting huffing and puffing at the door ready to just tell you where to get off because she is in a position like i said she left her jurisdiction grandmother or mother is rightly fitly placed in a position to rebuke this kid for skipping curfew for making out with girls in the street etc stuff like that but you don't get to as some woman from next door that barely knows this kid when this kid is just driving riding by with his bicycle headed home because you overheard that yesterday he was he skipped curfew at home and he's already been rebuked by his mom and everybody you then make a decision to just hurl insults at this kid as he's riding by your house on a bicycle coming back home from work from school sorry and he, he, this boy f it literally goes out of his way to just greet you hi mrs thompson and mrs thompson without even greeting back is like you're such a horrible kid why did you go get like home late yesterday your your parents must be so disappointed in you you need to get your act together what kind of a and this kid is just like riding his bike heartbroken you can see that he's afflicted by the way that this woman is speaking to him and he is shocked because he did not expect that this would happen when he rode past Mrs. Thompson's house and greeted. Instead, he just got hurled at by someone who left their jurisdiction and saw it fit to make themselves something that they are not. And then DeGeneres did that to Justin Bieber. She made herself his grandmother or his mom, perhaps his aunt, and decided to just rebuke him on national television, a grown man. He was at that stage already past his 18th birthday. He was a grown man that a woman that was in, in older than him, yes, mother age indeed, but not in any position to rebuke him, not like that. If at all you're going to be speaking about Justin Bieber's, you know, uh, misdemeanors or bad behavior from the vantage point of being a talk show host, you should be like, but Justin, goodness, that, that story, what do you have to say for yourself about that? Interview him from a vantage point where you are not condescending the condescending she was so incredibly condescending of him and it caught him off guard visibly you could see it in his face that's why i was emotional like i, I could literally cry when i saw it being covered by somebody else on youtube i literally got emotional i i was sad because i could see that he was caught off guard and his reaction was humble the way that a kid would react to a, a gogo yelling at him a kid would react to a mom yelling at him right he would he, he did not respond with who do you think you are to talk to me like that he reacted with a ma'am sir type vibe the way that if you were to get yelled at by some gogo that is out of her plane in so doing you would react if at all you're a respectful boy or a respectful girl however at the back of the mind of your mind just be really heartbroken about why it is that is this woman yelling at me like this that that's exactly like ellen degeneres literally went off on justin bieber the way that a mom would go off on a kid that skipped curfew or that is busy snuggling with all the girls and not doing homework he, he she did that to him comprehensively leaving a jurisdiction like i said and justin bieber was just staring at her as he was busy talking to her to him like this and he was obviously hurting and broken he was clearly shocked by the way she was talking to him and he just did not know how to deal with that it was just painful to observe. And that situation with Justin Bieber and Ellen DeGeneres, I endured it. I don't know how many times in this season. And mind you, Justin at that stage was a man in his, a young man in his 20s. I was already in my 30s as a grown woman who had had a whole career. All that happened was that I lost that career and then I got reviled. My name was false witnessed against. I was My name was dragged through the mud. And people caught wind of what in the world allegedly apparently that I am in the grapevine. And upon hearing what I allegedly apparently am in the grapevine, so it fit to talk to me like some teenage girl that needs to be rebuked for always just sleeping around with the boys, coming home after midnight, not doing homework, always getting grounded. What is this? Always getting um detention at school. And yeah, I got, yo, guys, like the pain. And because it was old women that were like the age of my mom i did not tell them who do you think you are i didn't react to them or something you are in no position to tell me this i just kept quiet and took it and the the whips the lashes on my back were so excruciating i would then go into a private corner and cry and one of them went so far as to 
tell me to shut up when I cried. Ooh, I've been put through so much in this season. Through so, so, so very much. And these older women who spoke to me like this, uh, guys, it, like, it is not just one. It is not just one. One of them, it was on the phone. Yes, oh, yes, and, you know, just listening to someone talk about you or to you like you are a rotten derelict with limited context or understanding, having had no true experience with you as you were growing up. Like, these women didn't even know me. They didn't know me, but they had heard rumors about me. And the way that they, like, the way yo guys, the way they just yelled at me like I was a child. Yeah, it crushed me as well. It, it, it broke me so severely. It devastated me so badly. And I got so mad at my mom and my sister and pretty much everybody that made these people do that. They, like, speak to me like that. I, I got so bitter at the fact that that was done to me. But why, why did those women react like that when there was nothing that I had done to warrant that one of the women i was so much like a daughter to her in the season when i was in her space that she used to always just call me for favors at some point i fixed her remote control and i was fixing her uh, dstv had an issue and i corrected that like i was just a handy person in her environment with all of them like yeah I, I was yeah you get my point i was perpetually in her space and she was the one that would call on me she was the one that would call on me so essentially she understood that I was responsible enough to be called on like that. Like umdana that you can trust uko nalana in this environment. Yo guys. And then one day something happens and the way she spoke to me it's like she never had any experiences with me at all in any capacity. In any capacity other than the rumor mill that she was, you know, um exposed to. This woman, oh goodness gracious, the the the, the yelling of my person by her was inspired by nothing but that which an older woman with beef and grief against a younger woman for no other reason than the glory that she still has that she lost because of what was likely done to her the reason why older women would become this horrific towards young women is likely because of trauma at the hands of either husbands or men or boyfriends just being mistreated by men and not all older women are senile and ridiculous towards young women they can be fresh and loving accommodating and absolutely f like just a delight to be in the climate of because they were loved wives by men who catered to their every need it makes a massive difference where a woman ends up in life in light of the company that she keeps concerning friends and also especially men in a romantic capacity who it is that you allow to be your husband can make a massive difference as to how you treat girl children and young women massive difference so i have not always been harassed by older women but the ones that did were always these senile women who were divorced in their early years they were not widowed into singlehood they were divorced into singlehood and it is it was as a result of bad men that treated them so harshly that they never even remarried and that level of bitterness in them makes them hate young women what i am trying to put out there is that if you've got that challenge if you've got that issue if you've been that afflicted by some terrible men at your in these streets know yourself recognize what's going on in there in you see yourself for exactly what it is that you very potentially are and therefore wear a godliness by protecting yourself from sinning just avoid young women if you are a bitter broad if you are a bitter older woman if your heart is not so mature that you can conquer it by the spirit put to death the deeds of the body just avoid them just avoid them the, the 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 pain and the sorrow that i endured at the hands of those women is the same pain that i am now enduring at women that are not even that much older than me they're not mommy age they are my peers they are gen x's and gen z's they're exennials essentially millennials mixed with gen x and these young people they're old but young they're older than gen z but they're they're young they're, they're, they're too young to be well some could actually be grandmothers by now but you get my point they, they're not exactly advanced in years but they have advanced experience in sorrow and it's made them blame thirsty where i'm concerned just like those older women that hurt me the way that that ellen degeneres hurt justin bieber it's made them blame thirsty it's made them imagine that i put myself i, I guys um when i was working out <laughs> 
and not only just at the time when I was worried, not not just today, but day yesterday and day before. I, I kept hearing words of understanding that the Lord is is funneling to me to gauge essentially the response of my person by certain women and why it is that they're not even supporting me why they're not standing with me neither even in the gap why they're not having my back why they're not trying to help me out and among the thoughts let me just tabulate them as i speak right now that i might get them out yesterday when i was working out day before well yesterday was like pretty much today right but as in the day before the last session of exercise i hear she's putting herself in a position to be korobelad She's putting herself in a position to be Gorobelad. So essentially watching my dance videos, my exercise portion of my ministry and saying that me uploading that content is me putting myself in a position to be slapped with Gorobel. Gorobela is a love spell. Those of you that speak English only uh, love juju. These spells that men put on women to make them be with them by force. I call it rape because it's the theft of autonomy. It's like Rufi's. It's taking away a woman's uh, faculties in order to make her ultimately end up in your bed when she would not have done that independent of your enablement by spirits. So I call it spiritual rape. It's properly like Rufis. That's what Corbella is. And these, I, I overheard some women, some women discussing saying of me that I, I'm putting myself because of my workouts in a position to be roofied, to be roofied. My goodness, Ezzy, guys y'all and that they they are basically self-justifying why it is that they are not supporting me and like i said they are presently ananias and safira where i'm concerned withholding support from a woman that god has basically charged them to love and they have not done that so therefore the best thing they can do for themselves is to get out leave my ministry that they won't have an accountability to serve me so that they don't have so that christ will not say to them one day when i was hungry you didn't give me food when I was naked, you didn't give me drink. Uh, when I was naked, you didn't give me clothes. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me drink. When I was in prison and sick, you did not visit me. When I needed hospitality, you did not invite me into your house. So Christ does not have to say that to you like in Matthew 25 one day. When you ask him, God, when, when did I never do this for you? He will then respond by saying, the least that you did not do for Garab or my disciple, you didn't do it for me. So that they don't find themselves in a position to be told by God. Depart from me. Because when I was hungry, they didn't give me food. They should leave my ministry so that they were not, so that they would not make themselves privy to my suffering while standing back doing nothing. Also speaking smack about what's going on with me and therefore justifying their complacency in my situation. And some of them even going out of their way to even bewitch me, to put spells on me, to justify that this here is something she had coming. So, with them saying that my exercise is the reason why I am being roofied. Herein lies the deal. First and foremost, my workouts are modest. And not only that, it is one of the most important uh, factions or segments of my ministry to do that. Because it's what I use to collect currency every single day that I might stay my own hand from suicide. I, I work out to put endorphins in my body. Dopamine, serotonin. So essentially to consume a natural antidepressant through exercise. It is a way for me to minister to those looking at my case how to survive this level of persecution. Exercise goes a long way. So I upload my exercise as a means to encourage people and to give them counsel as to how to survive demonic attacks. Sometimes exercise really goes a long way. That's the first thing. Okay, that is the first thing. However, right next to that, that kind of mindset you need to understand is, is, the similar, is a similar mindset to men raping a woman walking in the street as she's headed home following her into an alleyway and then taking her because her jeans were too tight or because her skirt was too short or because her figure was too out loss anything at all that according to these men she called it on herself she had it coming because why did you dress like that do you see how that kind of mindset is responsible for gender-based violence in any ecosystem no woman deserves to be raped even if she was to walk in broad daylight at a taxi rank in a bikini men are supposed to exercise self-control no one has it coming when i was on the come up there were two girls that were raped by taxi drivers en route pre taxi rank they got snatched at the mandela bridge and the reason why these women got raped was because they were wearing uh, bum shorts on campus adverts they are littered all over campus on summer in summer they they just walk up and down these streets it's just what they do that's what young women on campus do when they don't have conviction of modesty in christ 
and these kids went home to grab taxis at Brie Taxi Rank and then they got encircled by it made the news that story they got encircled by a whole bunch of angry taxi drivers saying to them how dare you walk in public like this and they grabbed them and went and gang raped them and apparently they had it coming because they were wearing bum shorts of course the nation was outraged and more outraged were women than men and one, some among the things that were being proliferated by these women who were outraged were it doesn't matter what I wear, you don't have a right to just take my body. You don't have a right to just take my body. Even if I were to wear skin tight clothing, you don't have a right. You must exercise self control, brittle your own flesh, you beastly demon man you. That mindset I would imagine women still largely hold to it, do they not? Any woman at all if they, would, if they were to successfully call themselves a woman would agree that no woman has rape coming for crying out loud. So to substantiate or justify any kind of sexual harassment of a woman based on what you imagine is her putting herself in a position to experience that is to go against everything that women tend to stand against. Those two women back in the day, those two girls that got raped from Vitz University by a whole bunch of taxi drivers and the story made the news, even these women that I'm speaking to would at, at that stage have also been outraged. Yet when it comes to me, the world hates disciples, it's like with, with um uh the jewish women that were raped and how it is that un women kept quiet they were they were mum only because you're dealing with a christian woman now it is all of a sudden now explainable and understandable why men are going so crazy yeah well allow the same men then to salivate after your daughter who are looking at me working out fully clothed there's like a whole movement on the internet right now tiktok is just teeming at the folds with it of a whole bunch of these young hypersexualized women wearing literally practically nothing at gymnasiums and then offending men attacking men for ogling at them at the gym feeling harassed for wearing tight like skin colored outfits that even groove in the center of their body cracks and these women would then record videos on some i feel so harassed by this dude essentially they call gym girls and they are annoying they are annoying it's like you put yourself in a position to be looked at by these strange men and then their whole reaction on the internet is that these men are very rapey and then they get a whole bunch of um women responding to them on some how dare they how dare they but these women are the ones that put themselves in a position to do that however it is generally agreed that if at all these women were to be truly harassed by men truly like accosted sexually harassed or raped even by men for wearing those things at the gym in spite of them wearing outfits that crop in the center of their buttocks literally don't nobody deserve that you don't get to do that these women are crazy, they're annoying, they have put themselves out there like meat to be devoured. But men are still not to just pounce on them like they're beasts. It is written in God's word that like a city without walls, so too is a man without self-control. So if a person is like a, uh, and again it's also written in God's word that like a bear robbed of its cubs, so too is a person without self-control. So if a man is like a bear robbed of his cubs, and so he has no self-control, if at all a man is like a city without walls and so he has no self-control and just rapes a woman, we all agree. In society if at all we are sober we all agree that this here is an outrage it's ridiculous he ought not have done that in spite of this lady wearing you know these outfits that they rock these days at, 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 in these gymnasiums and then they record on tiktok and irritate all of the internet at least anybody that's sober will be annoyed with them because they're putting men in a position to ogle but at the same time bears without cubs would pounce on that and just take what they want devour anyway but there are men that can gouge out their eyes and cut off their hands, exercise self-control and not look or if they look will immediately look away. And some of them are genuinely just being harassed or accused of doing strange things because these women are attention seeking. Now, those are the Instagram ladies, the TikTok ladies, the YouTube ladies that are out here recording themselves in gyms looking like that. I look nothing like those women. That, that, is the, that is the point that I'm actually gunning for right now. I look absolutely nothing like those women in my dance videos. I am fully clothed in every video that I work, work out in and I go out of my way to avoid sensual dance moves. I am just a woman that is training my body and it's clear that I'm gunning for some squats, for some lunges. I am moving my body in a way so as to train it and I'm fully clothed. Are we not allowed to jog in the street? Whether or not we are attractive is irrelevant. You can be wearing a parachute, do you understand? But if a man is going to lust after you, he's going to lust after you and he's going to lust after you. You could be wearing a balloon, but if a man is going to lust after you, he's going to lust after you, he's going to lust after you. Women who jog in tracksuit pants and hoodies every so often get grabbed in bushes and raped. The woman was wearing a hoodie, the woman was wearing tracksuit pants and she still got grabbed. 
she was not jogging in a bum short in tight like lycra pants no and yet she still got raped we all agree as women that it is abominable to therefore just pounce on a woman like a beast in the wilderness a bear robbed of its cubs purely because she titivated your taste buds and you lacked self-control lack self-control so when then a woman is as fully clothed as i am and going out of her way to avoid even sensuality and anything at all that can trigger or stumble men and all i'm doing is working out on youtube and really and truly if you were to look at many of the workout videos on youtube by women some of whom even call themselves christian they are immodest do you understand what i'm saying they're immodest and even within their immodesty it's not even that immodest in comparison to some of these gym girls they are immodest in the sense that you see their tummies immodest in the sense that you see all of their thighs but they are wearing what do you call this like sports bras and and and, and tights it's immodest in the sense that it is immodest if you're a christian woman but it according to the standards of this world is law is actually quite very decently clothed given the trend of wearing pra practically nothing when you work out these days and yet these women nobody is saying to them you deserve it when you are being salivated after by some roofing men but with a woman that is fully clothed fully clothed working out in the fashion that i work out i am being spoken of as one that is calling corobella on herself yeah like the woman jogging on in the bush and gets herself put it like you know accosted like yanked in a corner and raped she had it coming why because how dare you jog in front of men how dare you jog in front of men with that kind of mindset ain't no woman supposed to have a fitness like channel at all a fitness endeavor at all they must just work out and squat in their houses and leave it there if you can influence people in fitness without stumbling them and without also messing up with women's modesty why not do it there aren't enough christians out here trying to train christians how to be a fitness influencer without being immodest so there's frankly a market for it and i'm tapping into it and i am being communicated as one who is stumbling men deliberately like i am out here lifting doing a deadlift at the gymnasium wearing some kind of cropping right up my buttock tight that's also the same color skin color as my skin so i look naked i look naked that's what's good i'm not doing that am i and yet i am apparently allegedly deserving of all of this corobella i am apparently allegedly deserving of all of this corobella women you are unacceptable your disastrous way of thinking is insatiable frankly and you need to conquer it in the worst way in the worst way I'm not going to make this video two parts. I need, I'm going to get everything I need to say in this one part, frankly, because I'm I, like, yeah, my edits are killing me. My edits are killing me. That was the one thing that I heard when I was working out that I apparently am putting myself in a position to be gorobelad by some licentious men who are like bears robbed of their cubs, incontinent, entirely lacking in self-control. I, I had it coming, Mina, le gorobel, this roofies, coming from women, coming from women. And then this often this this evening's workout session i see myself as a crate uh, a potato that is all old and you know finished up inside a crate of potatoes essentially with and with th that whole thing coming at me well what's emanating off it is women women saying she is going to work until she is exhausted until she is so drained that she doesn't have energy to keep on uploading because she is unrewarded it is a thankless job that what she is doing so for those reasons granted that she has no support and no money nothing coming through and she keeps on uploading these videos even though she gets zero views this thing about gouge out your eye cut off your hand you're yelling at a woman having left your jurisdiction that did not have it coming because you're better there is something that has messed you up in life and it's causing you to desire that i should become that potato buried in the ground that also gets old you know those shorts that i did with the potato i was lamenting about how it is that witches have buried me in the ground and in that vision i was a potato in a crate and i was an old potato now that had lost its juice and it was soft and cushy mm. these are women saying that let these witches bury you garabo until you are old and tired you will never ever make money it's written in god's word that anger is overwhelming and fury is a flood but who can stand before jealousy that's what jealousy does to people so women for the sake of your souls if at all you can't stand me if i trigger you instead of thinking of me as an old potato or a potato that's headed for old or instead of looking at me like i have it coming like I have it coming. Do you understand what I'm saying? That so many men would corbella the living daylights out of me. Mm. Get out of my ministry so you can stay yourself from thinking rubbish thoughts. God gets that you are bitter. 
He remembers that you are made of dust and so he has compassion on you. He, he gets that you had some deadbeat husband. He gets that you had some deadbeat ex. He gets that you got infected by HIV, with HIV by some dude who claimed he was negative. He gets that you are bitter. And because he gets it, he has compassion on your lack of conviviality where I am concerned. He has mercy on the fact that you are unkind to me. That you struggle with me, that I trigger you. But what he has no mercy on is that you are going out of your way to afflict me with sorrow when I'm already in sorrow. He has mercy on your inability to truly be kind to me. But he has no mercy on the fact that you are actively committing atrocities against me, afflicting me, breaking me, and calling me one who has this whole sorrow coming. So given that the Lord gets why you struggle with kindness, humor his compassion and walk out of my ministry so as to honor him. This here is not about me. It's about your relationship with God. Get out so you won't be so embittered that you will start speaking smack against a woman that is entirely innocent and on top of that she's a woman. So you ought to be a lot more compassionate. You ought to have a lot more empathy towards me, yet you don't. Do not make yourself the thing that's going to be told apart from me because not only what did you ascertain that my disciple is maintained in hunger when it is that she was hungry you didn't feed her. You not only ignored her hunger but you literally went and grabbed your two fingers and stuffed them into her throat after she ate and made her vomit. You stole from her over and above. Ignoring her hunger, you also stole from her. You did witchcraft and made sure that she cannot break past, that she will not get out of this, that she's gonna be that old potato that's gonna be buried underground until she's so tired that she can't work out anymore. You made my daughter bulimic. You properly took out all the food that she was putting in, all this work that I do with no reward. The Lord has pain and sorrow concerning it. For we are supposed to work by the sweat of our brow that we might eat. And it, it is also written in the Acts of the Apostles that if anybody does not want to work, let them not eat. So the fact that I'm not eating, albeit working, is a travesty in the sight of God. He hates unequal scales. This here is an unjust thing. He is not delighted with the status quo. And some of y'all are participants in the mutiny against me in that regard. You are yelling at me like Ellen DeGeneres yelling at Justin Bieber. And you are putting yourself therefore in harm's way. Get out of my ministry. Sever your hand. That phantom feeling, sensation that you have will ultimately fade. If you find me extremely relatable, but you are unable to be mature, get out. There are so many other women that you can listen to on the internet that are not going to trigger you because they're not a testimony fueled in the way that they deliver the gospel. Get out. Because you are literally in harm's way by having these kinds of thoughts. And then the last abominable uh, abominable really feverishly disgusting thing that i saw was of two women having a conversation among themselves about my baby daddy that's why i did some emergency shorts my baby daddy for those of you who are new to my ministry fret not freak out not no i do not have a child i've never had a child i do not have therefore a baby daddy and yet i was being spoken of as one who has a baby daddy essentially that was a witchy prophecy Speaking of how it is, that I'm out here, going to be sporting a kid but without sporting a ring. Sporting a child but without sporting a spouse. Sporting a baby but without sporting godliness in producing that progeny, that offspring. Literally women doing witchcraft to make me just like them. I was Christian Nami holding on to God but then my biological clock was ticking and I made a baby anyway. I'm 39, we get it. Geriatric womb, we absolutely get it. But I am also a Christian. First before I'm anything else. I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and he's got rules. He's got stipulations that he put forth and he said, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers first and foremost and secondly, don't fornicate, flee from sexual immorality. And these women are trying to make me have sex. Why? Because you did it. You did it. You know why? Because you didn't count the cost of being a disciple. You did not actually build your house upon the rock. That's why you got taken away by every tsunami, every wind and, 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 and every wave that tossed you to and from by every wind of doctrine. You now imagine it's feasible for me to be tossed because you were tossed. Do not compare us to each other because if you were never truly regenerated by the Holy Spirit, you cannot compare yourself to a true Christian. You have no idea the amount of reverence and fear we have for God, for the one true God. No idea. So therefore, to, Im to, to imagine that you can continue to concoct spells that are repetitive, frankly, because it's not the first time I'm enduring this rubbish, uh, concoct spells against me. To just settle for some random deadbeat no-brainer out in these streets that's going to impregnate me because I'm furiously worried about my biological clock that is ticking. When I was working out... As a result of the sorcery of these gangster women, there then, of course, was a bravado and an emboldenment that I felt, an emboldenment, like men feeling emboldened. To carry on, I, I spoke in the video that I did yesterday that a lot of the reason why these men don't stop with their insanity 
is precisely because of the fact that they are supported, aided and abetted along by women. There is nothing that incentivizes them or rather disincentivizes them from continuing in this fashion. And so they carry on. Women are applauding them. Positive reinforcement. They're enabled to carry on doing what they're doing because everybody loves them for it. They are being rewarded for wicked behavior. So I got a vision while I was working out of me mistakenly just kind of having sex with a guy i don't even know how that happens i mean to have sex involves so much energy there is so much mechanical work that is involved in eventually ending up having sex you gotta unbutton clothing you gotta literally like land on and get inside a, a private room close the door and, and, and disrobe yourself and then get down so for me to mistakenly have sex how did that happen how did i partake in so many mechanical activities to end up in an environment where I would be having sex and then whoops, I'm pregnant. For me to just go out of my way to sin against God, humoring some fraternizing buffoon that does not even know God. Somebody out here flirting the living dads out of me with me until I am in a private space, disrobed, having sex. It takes so much to get there. There are so many steps to count to get there. And for a person to try to take away a person's autonomy to a point of eventually ending up in that zone, for me to take a call of a man for me to humor him chat with him perhaps in the direct messaging space and then one day hop in his car him drive to a hotel or his apartment and then all that happened for me to allow all of those steps to happen starting in the direct messaging space because where else are they going to find me where else are they going to find me seeing as i go nowhere and i do nothing with my life but this where else so basically the first step is for me to humor some idiot in a direct message that's one day going to pick me up and put me on some bed. All those steps, I gotta take them because somebody took away my autonomy to think straight and also my autonomy to choose to love Jesus. You are pompous, arrogant guys and you are headed to the flames of hell as a result. The result of this is not going to be very pretty. I then had a dream last night. This time it wasn't a vision when I was working out, but it was a dream where it is that I was a stepmom to some dude with like a couple of kids and an ex-wife that was a really bad girl. The very thing I keep on lamenting against. Marriage and remarriage, all that jazz. I'm not doing it. But people keep going back to the drain board where I'm concerned because women, you're being supported. I am being spoken of as a person that is sexless. No, I'm not sexless. I am celibate. The way you think is warped. A teenager that is yet to have sex is not sexless. A seven-year-old child that is not yet sexually active is not sexless. They're just... In existence until such time that they are in a position to have sex i am not sexless i am waiting on god for a husband i am not morose at the prospect of not being engaged in sexual relations i am cured from the bondage of fornication it happened 13 years ago and i gave my life to jesus i was rescued from that futility rescued and yet i am being, being regarded by fornicators as one who is sexless you might as well call a seven-year-old girl sexless then because that's exactly what reverting to chastity and purity is like. It's like you never did it. Because you are yet to rightly and legally do it in a marriage. So continue in that such perverted talk, guys. And trying to get me to accommodate some dude that's going to make out of me Alicia Keys or Angelina Jolie. Someone that actually steals a husband for some woman. Like, Papa, I keep lamenting against these things. On a loop. The psychosis is exquisite. It is exquisite. And yet people don't gauge it for exactly what it is. I am exhausted with the wickedness of my country. I am especially exhausted with the wickedness of women in this particular feat, in this particular endeavor that I am walking in right now. I'm tired with the wickedness of women. I'm tired of the wickedness of men, of course. Women, however, are especially disappointing because you ought to be doing differently by me. You ought to be thinking different thoughts concerning my situation, given that it is so triggering, so triggering to so many women. This here is a common issue that we all experience at the hands of entitled men. And yet no one is standing with me because I guess, you know, it, the, the rules are different when you're Christian. The rules are different when you're a Jew. When you're Jewish or Christian, the rules are different. UN women ignored the rape against all those women in Israel. And I'm being ignored because I'm a godly woman. And apparently my exercise is, is, is fitly the reason why it is that I am being roofied so much by men who are essentially incontinent. They are cities without walls, no self-control, but women are out here saying that they, they they get where these men are coming from. Yeah, just in the same way that I guess you might have gotten where those rapists of those t of those um young women from this university were coming from. Well, when you think about it in that vantage point, when you go and you grab a worldly example 
you then see just how abominable such trashy thoughts are and yet you don't see it that way with a godly white woman that's why gary get out of my ministry you are trying to make me fornicate it's never gonna happen but just the fact that you can fathom that the day's gonna come when i would walk in so many mechanical steps to get to a point of laying under a man and making him my baby daddy whoa whoa like so many steps just the fact that you think i can actually get there is pompous guys it's arrogant it, it's just so narcissistic just leave my ministry women when this is you just leave get out i told you i'm gunning for the gen z's yo i am gunning for the gen z's if you're an exennial and you're suffering with listening to me rescue your relationship with jesus and so therefore your soul by getting out of my ministry the lord gets that you struggle with kindness where i'm concerned he gets it you had a deadbeat ex you were given hiv by some rando he gets it now get out of my ministry so that you will not uh, in the spirit of being triggered afflict me just leave i mean goshi i am sending you to your own salvation i'm trying to snatch you out from the flames by telling you to get the step in it's not me kicking you out it's me inviting you in actually to the kingdom of heaven i'm inviting you by kicking you out otherwise you are not going to get saved you need to leave my ministry because i had a dream a horrible nightmare of some gargantuan tall menacing beastly demon excited to receive a man and a woman it's like he had just the scales and on both sides on one side was a man and on the other side was a woman into hell like a big chunky red ugly demon it was tall it was gargantuan it was carrying a man and a woman on both hands and they had just died they had just died the lord is showing me that this balance of bonnie and clyde this criminal pair of men and women that are participating in the mutiny against the body of christ you are about to enter the abyss and today i am lamenting against these wicked women in particular men are the at this particular juncture byproduct responsibility it, it lies on the women for putting them in a position to think that i am grabbable and gettable as for me being a potato buried underground being bewitched into obscurity if at all i am still frozen because i don't know what's going on with my youtube channel everything works out for my good that much is a certainty romans 8 28 all things work together for the good of them who love the lord and are called according to his purposes so while i might not understand what's going on the lord told me not to lean on my own understanding in all of my ways acknowledge him and he will make my paths straight he is doing something with this and like i said and i keep saying it i keep highlighting it over and over again i believe it's the rapture he has used me as a strong delusion so no i will not end up some pruned up finished off old potato buried underground by witches i'm not at the mercy of the kingdom of darkness i'm too consecrated i can't be cursed what i am is a child of the living god on a mission a job that god has set apart for me to walk in in advance and i'm walking in it and all this like activity happening with my frozen state yeah no that too comprehend this has been planned by a holy god who in his sovereignty knows what he's doing in a way that i don't so like a persistent widow i just keep bashing on his door asking for help bashing on the door of wicked judges asking for help and ultimately if at all the lord will see it fit to do that for me he will give me help or the rapture something is going to give for me but i will not inevitably be kept in this circumstance that's what you must understand because the scepter of the wicked shall not remain on the land allotted to the righteous lest the righteous should turn their hands aside to do evil psalm 125 i am not going to be maintained in all the sorrow that much is a guarantee i trust jesus i believe him i believe him and that's something that you failed at doing however i am encouraging you to start doing it now and more than anything i'm encouraging you to get out of my ministry because you cannot receive me you cannot receive me the lord will bless those who receive his persecuted saints but if you receive if you receive a prophet you will receive a prophet's reward if you receive a righteous person you will receive that righteous person's reward if however you cannot receive those people then necessarily the opposite must be true in that you will receive punishment so just get out if you can't receive me just get out and save yourselves from the accountability and the responsibility of being told by god when i was hungry you did not feed me when i was naked you didn't clothe me when i was thirsty you did not give me drink and when i was naked and uh, sorry when i was in prison and sick you did not visit me when i was in dire need of hospitality you did not invite me in i am just trying to get to that particular point spare yourself from the wrath of god flee from the wrath to come there is really nothing else that I can say at this point. I am not marrying some deadbeat. I'm not marrying some ex, some dudes, some scraps, some man with an ex-wife. I'm not marrying some dude with baggage. I am not having a baby because my biological clock is ticking. I'm not doing any of that. But just the fact that you keep on going back to so drawing board trying to achieve it is going to get you condemned. 
Do not say I didn't warn you. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cran K. Peace.